all the millions of animal species on Earth are armed with a weapon of some kind. Deployed to catch their prey, evade a hunter, or secure a mate. This weaponry gives animals the edge they need to endure. Finely tuned over millions of years of evolution, only the strongest contenders remain fighting in the battle for survival. More animal warriors compete in the world's lush jungles and dense forests than anywhere else on the planet. But it's a home riddled with hiding places and elaborate escape routes. This complex hunting arena demands some of the deadliest weaponry in the world's great animal arms race. Deep in the jungle, the greatest dangers lurk, unseen. Weighing in at half a ton and armed with the most powerful bite of any species, the female saltwater crocodile is a deadly predator. In Borneo, Southeast Asia, she is queen of the jungle. However, her prey also comes well armed. Protected by many cautious eyes and ears, they can quickly melt back into the forest. A confusing maze of vegetation. In a flat out chase across this complicated hunting arena, crocodiles know they will lose. so they wait for their prey to come to them. A small herd of bearded pigs presents an opportunity. Pigs are intelligent and fast. But the crocodile is patient. She is an expert ambush hunter. Although the reptilian brain is small, crocodiles are capable of studying the habits of their prey and coming up with a plan. When the time is right, she goes undercover. Maneuvering her considerable bulk beneath the surface. No easy feat for such a mammoth hunter.
As close as possible to the bank, she freezes. By slowing her heart rate, the crocodile can stay like this for up to an hour. She won't attack unless the pig wanders into the strike zone. Sixty sharp teeth snap shut on the pig, and she pulls it under into a death roll, drowning and dismembering her victim. It's been the perfect ambush, showing off the crocodile's successful mix of strength and strategy. Planning a hidden attack from beneath the cover of water is one thing, but how does a hunter creep up on its prey from the river's edge? In the depths of the Amazon jungle in South America, potential hiding places are everywhere, and on each tree sits a sentry. The rest of the forest works together, alerting all to the presence of an invader. In this case, a jaguar, the largest cat in the Americas. Armed with the strongest bite of all the big cats relative to size, a jaguar can kill prey instantly with one powerful bite. And unlike most cats, they're not afraid of the water. As good swimmers and able to rip through scales and tough skin, jaguars are the only felines who regularly hunt reptiles. A member of the turtle family. The terrapin carries a safety bunker on its back. Overlapping plates of keratin form a barrier around its vital organs. If threatened, the terrapin will retreat inside. So the trick is to creep up on it, undetected. Today has been a success, but only two percent of the jungle's protein is found on the forest floor, because most animals rarely leave the safety of the canopy. Famous for their excruciatingly slow speed. Sloths spend most of their lives in the treetops, and never do anything in a rush. In Central America's Costa Rica, this female and her pup are on the search for some succulent leaves. But sloths are picky eaters, so it takes time. Moving at such a measured pace is actually quite difficult.
Sloths are surprisingly strong and have a vice-like grip. Good for getting around, but also deployed as a weapon to evade their enemies. On the forest floor, a jaguar rundi approaches. Although one of the smaller cats, she's still large enough to take on a sloth. Her otter-like tail gives her incredible balance, and her slender build makes it easy to scale trees in an instant. Like most hunters, she responds to any sign of movement. So the sloth freezes, shielding her pup from view. Suspended only by their arms, a sloth can hold its position in mid-air for over 10 minutes. Long enough for even a sharp-sighted cat to lose interest. Algae growing in the sloth's fur completes the camouflage. A close shave. This time, slow and steady wins the race. Back in the Amazon River, some predators have learned to hunt as a team. Giant otters communicate constantly with one another. They're a small, tightly knit family made up of a lead female and several generations of her offspring. Only by working together with military precision can they quickly capture their prey. Because these otters are fish eaters. And in these streams, nothing is faster than a fish. Webbed back feet make the otters strong swimmers, and thick whiskers guide them to the fish by sensing tiny vibrations. Some targets have already been identified. The troop begins driving the fish downstream. The young ones hang back, watching the adults. Their ability to learn from one another is key to the otter's successful cooperation. The fish school together, seeking safety in numbers. But this is exactly what the otters are waiting for. They herd the fish towards a dense patch of aquatic plants, and the trap is set. When predators work together, they can bring down even the most slippery prey. Further south of the equator, dense jungles give way to the open forests and woodlands of Australia's east coast. Here, predators must rely on camouflage to surprise their prey. The venomous death adder, armed with some of the longest fangs of any snake, 
and one of the fastest strikes. He can attack in a quarter of a second, faster than the blink of an eye. It's rare to ever see one on the move, for the adder never actively hunts. Instead, he has a secret weapon for tricking prey to their deaths. His taper-thin tail acts as a lure, mimicking the movement of a tasty insect. The weapon is so deceptive, even death adders in less forested areas use it to entice their prey. It's been a long time between meals, and nearby is a perfect target. A skink on its own hunt for flies and moths. In one second, a skink can cover 10 times its own body length. Good for catching flying prey and escaping danger. This adder is no match for its speed, so instead he hunkers down and sets his trap. All it takes is the smallest twitch. To a skink, it's simply irresistible. The skink is in striking range, and yet the adder holds its position. Even this close, the lizard could still escape. The adder pumps the skink's body full of neurotoxic venom. First, the lizard is paralyzed, then his lungs begin to fail. The adder's tempting tail has done its deadly job. For those seeking to avoid capture, Australia's open forests have fewer places to hide. So some animals have evolved impressive defensive arsenals. Like the heavily armored echidna. They belong to an ancient order of mammals called monotremes egg-laying mammals, and have existed here unchanged for over 15 million years. A testament to the effectiveness of their bristling defenses. They also have their own offensive weapons. A sensitive beak picks up electrical signals emitted by the insects they prey upon. Once their target is in range, they deploy a rapid-fire tongue 15 centimeters in length and covered in sticky mucus. To get his fill, this male has to eat over 40,000 ants and termites a day. Sometimes his meal fights back a nest of meat ants. Meat ants. With their troops numbering in the tens of thousands, meat ants devour anything in their path, dead or alive. They are also highly territorial and will sacrifice their lives to defend their nest. The echidna's spines are no defense against these miniature warriors, but his swift tongue can inflict heavy damages in just a few seconds. So he's planning a shock and awe assault on this ant fortress. 
As soon as he enters the nest, the ants sound the alarm. A forward line of guards swarm the enemy. The ants might be small, but they can inflict painful bites and have the weight of numbers. The echidna is repulsed. Ridding himself of the remaining fighters is no easy task. Even animals as well armed as the echidna can find themselves outmaneuvered. In many forests, those with even less protection have evolved to survive under the cover of darkness. They seek safety in the night, but they're mistaken. The barn owl is the master of the night sky. Its large eyes are extremely sensitive in low light. But his real weapon is a sense that can penetrate even the darkest of nights. The owl's heart-shaped face channels sound into his ears, like a satellite dish used for ultra-precision hearing. It is put to the test, tracking the careful movements of the owl's favorite meal, the common house mouse. Widespread on every continent outside Antarctica, the mouse is one of the most successful mammals on the planet. It stays beneath the grass with access to a maze of escape routes on a miniature scale. Huge round ears pick out any telltale sign of danger. Yet even the most vigilant mouse can give itself away. The owl has detected its target, but the hunt is far from over. One sound from its wings and the mouse will be down one of its emergency exits in a heartbeat. So the owl has evolved into one of the quietest flyers in the animal kingdom. Most bird wings have hard edges that whip the air as they move. The barn owl's wings, however, are frayed at the ends, softening the passage of the air. They ghost through the trees without even a whisper. The barn owl eats about four rodents a night. That's almost 1,500 kills a year. No wonder it's such a well-honed hunter. Mice are not the only animals who tried to hide amongst the undergrowth. In fact, most of the creatures here use the foliage as cover. Insects make up 80% of all species on the planet. And the majority of them are found in forests. Such tiny prey are best hunted by tiny predators.
Spiders kill 800 million tons of insects each year. Double the amount of meat and fish consumed by humans. This is warfare waged on an industrial scale. And yet these miniature battles are rarely seen close up. A Porsche spider, one of the most highly skilled micro hunters. Her first weapon is an incredible way of getting around. Able to leap 50 times her body length, escape seems impossible when it comes to Portia. But she isn't one for the chase. She prefers food which sticks around. Portia is a spider hunting specialist. Double her size and with huge fangs full of venom, the St. Andrew's cross spider is a dangerous target. Other hunters have tried and failed. Preparing for this hit will take some time. So Portia deploys her second weapon. Camouflage. She waves her bristly legs in front of her. To a short-sighted prey, she probably looks like a leaf fluttering in the wind. And so unseen, she can conduct her surveillance. For Portia has a third secret weapon. She is a mastermind. Although her brain is no larger than a sesame seed, Portia can think ahead and formulate a plan of attack. She starts with a deception, plucking strands of the web to imitate struggling prey. She tries to lure the cross spider closer. But he's not falling for the trick. On to plan B. It's time for a more direct approach. Insects are armed with weapons unimaginable in larger animals. A grasshopper has enormously long legs built for leaping out of trouble. If it were the size of a human, it could travel nearly 30 meters in one jump. Which is why this chameleon must make a covert approach. eyes that can see in 360 degrees, she can zero in on her target without even moving. There's no need to get any closer. Her tongue lashes out at two and a half thousand meters per second. 
that's seven times faster than a speeding bullet. It's one of the quickest weapon deployments in the animal kingdom. Combined with deadly accuracy, a chameleon rarely misses. To compete against predators with such supercharged weapons, many forest insects have evolved sophisticated defense systems. The iridescent hue of the peppermint stick insect precisely matches the leaves of the screw pine tree where she makes her home. The tree provides for all her needs shelter and an abundance of food. But enemies abound even in the land of plenty. A jungle huntsman, one of the fastest eight-legged hunters on the planet. The stick insect can't fly, so she has no way of escaping him. But she is armed and ready to defend herself. Two small glands on her neck are loaded with a sticky minty fluid. She has her own inbuilt water cannon and she's not afraid to use it. Her timing is crucial. If she shoots too early, she will miss her target and deplete her ammunition. So she braces until the very last moment. A burst of spray that can reach half a meter and it's all over in an instant. But only momentarily. It seems all is lost for the stick insect. Yet the huntsman doesn't seem so sure. Peppermint is revolting to spiders, and now his meal is covered in it. The sweet-smelling stick insect will live to see another day. Tiny weapons can certainly pack a punch, but the proboscis monkey of Borneo prefers things on the larger end of the scale. He sports one of the most bizarre animal appendages, an enormous nose, a weapon of seduction. While to the untrained eye, it may not seem appealing, To female proboscis monkeys, this is the picture of an alluring mate. His oversized nose, which stretches below the mouth, signals that he's a large strapping beast with a higher sperm count than other males who aren't so well endowed which is why he's the dominant male in charge of a large harem of females and young. He keeps the troop together by calling out to them. Here, his nose helps again, producing an enchanting baritone that females are powerless to resist. But the calls have also attracted some unwanted attention. A gang of bachelor males hoping to get in on the action. Ah. 
Such incursions cannot be tolerated. The crack of broken branches should be a warning signal. But one of the bachelors comes closer still. So the dominant male unleashes his fury. Armed with over 20 kilos of muscle and sharp canines, he's a formidable enemy. The gang departs, leaving the dominant male to his ladies. He wins this round by a nose. Males hoping to attract females must tread carefully. Their elaborate displays can also attract the wrong kind of attention, leaving them in the firing line. Surprisingly, one of the most complicated performances is put on by the tiniest of males. The itsy bitsy peacock spider of Australia. Measuring just five millimeters long, he's one of the smallest arachnids on Earth. But this spider's got style. With a brilliantly colored abdominal flap, and ultraviolet hues, this showstopper is dressed to impress. He's already caught the eye of a female, but he won't pass on good looks alone. He must master one of the gaudiest courtship displays of any animal. He moves into position and begins. The spotlight becomes his world and the male gives it his all because on this stage the stakes are life or death. If he impresses the female, he'll be allowed to mate with her. But if he fails, the female will eat him. It's not just a visual display. The male is also sending good vibrations through the ground to his lover in the hope that she will also get her groove on. The male approaches the end of his routine And just like a gymnast, he holds his final position. With bated breath, he awaits her verdict. This time, it's 10 out of 10. Not only has the male saved his neck, he is allowed to pass on his sperm, which he does by gently scooping it into the female using his pedipalps. Although female peacock spiders are difficult to win over, they are loyal. Once she is mated, this female is unlikely to take another dance partner. From the dance floor to the gladiator's arena. Home to miniature warriors, prepared to battle to the death to win the hand of a female. With giant horns longer than two thirds their body size, rhinoceros beetles are armed with some of the most elaborate weapons of any animal. Far from the subtle art of seduction, 
These horns are used for grabbing, shoving, and throwing rivals in an attempt to secure the best females. This contender is on the way to a female waiting on a branch down below. But first, he'll have to force his way through. Another huge male thinks he is the king here. He won't tolerate a rival. Each tries to topple the other, using their two-pronged horns as a ramming device. As the brawl continues, on a nearby log, other fighters begin circling each other. A different species of rhino beetle, they are armed with two strong tusks and grapple like wrestlers. Each variety of beetle has their own unique fighting style. The key here is to use the tusks to launch an opponent clear of the ring. It's a throwdown, an easy victory. Meanwhile, in the other ring, the fight is still underway. Although on a miniature scale, this is a battle of giants, slamming into each other with crushing force. Defeated. The arms race between males produces the biggest weapons of the animal kingdom. In comparison, females are often smaller and less well armed. However, there are some species where it's the females who are all powerful. In the northern rainforests of Australia, a female cassowary towers over her mate. Almost two meters tall, she is also stronger, more aggressive, and has larger weapons. She's the queen in this part of the forest, with a defined territory and several males with whom she mates. She's been courting this male for several weeks and today has laid a clutch of eggs. Now it's the male who takes charge. The queen heads back into the jungle to woo her next suitor. while the male is left to incubate the eggs and raise the chicks once they hatch. Yet this father is inexperienced and he soon abandons the nest in search of a drink, leaving the eggs dangerously exposed. For on the outskirts of the Queen's territory, a rival female lurks, hoping to topple her rule. With no territory of her own, the rival's chances of breeding are nil, unless she can find a way to lure a male away from the Queen.
Destroying the monarch's eggs would be a daring move. Yet, eliminating the competition is the only way for this female to ensure her bloodline will reign. The male returns, but he is too small to take on a larger, assertive female. So the rival gets to it, undisturbed. The dirty work done, she will now attempt to mate with the male, an illicit liaison carried out while the queen is away. The battle of the females is just beginning, and the stakes couldn't be higher. For failing to raise young is an evolutionary full stop for the individual. A dead end. And that's why many parents use all the weapons at their disposal to keep their young safe especially in the first highly vulnerable hours after birth. Crocodiles are surprisingly diligent and protective mothers. A female guards her nest for 80 days. Any would-be egg raiders face half a ton of angry crocodile. Armed with a bone-crushing bite and lightning-fast reflexes, Mother Croc never lets her guard down, sleeping literally with one eye open only shutting down one half of her brain at a time. Vigilance is crucial, for tonight her eggs are about to hatch. When they emerge, the hatchlings are just under 30 centimeters long. They are able to hunt immediately, but at this size, they are more likely to become the meal. Incredibly, their mother switches off her instinct to strike at reptiles of this size turning from deadly predator into heavily armed bodyguard. As dawn breaks, the young enter the water and mum struggles to keep tabs on everyone. Hunters for these bite-sized babies are everywhere. Like a great egret patrolling the riverbank. Their biggest threat is other crocodiles. 
Crocs will hunt anything that moves, even their own brethren. One juvenile male can't resist the temptation. The threatened hatchling sends out a distress signal to its mother, who reacts in an instant. This time, the hatchling is saved. But as the newborns head upstream, protecting them becomes even more difficult. For every 100 eggs the mother croc lays, only one hatchling will make it through the next few years. Food in the jungle will always be elusive. The hunted as well armed as the hunter. Others will be locked in constant battles with their rivals, or face threats to their young lurking around every corner. In the world's most complex hunting arena.